ทันเนกุนจําดอบงงจิมิชุชิสิงกะซอนเดสตันเดสตาสุนรัตเนยันดาชุนเกนเซนนยันดาตะเตลาซอนยอมกะปสลาตะเตตาเวขอรังกุส
So therefore, in these first two lines, it says, Namo, kind and compassionate, you ripen through empowerment and free through instruction, my continuum, my mind, through transmission, empowerment, and instruction. The second statement about the root guru is, you embody all root and lineage gurus. Because the root guru transmits the teachings and blessings, embodies them. And then he is referred to by name, using two of his names, Beings Protector, Mipam Trinle Kunjab, which was part of the uh, long personal, also part of that uh, 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 personal name. I pray to you. Ninjong Tenitiawa Chinjalo, Somali. Tateta Vuke Sova Tabatella, Guba Chaparjan to go your days. That Guba Chaparjan de Cadiri Senna. Tan Parmachipala Kawan で、Padu Joba Chesho de Mato Loto Tesam Senta Sungiori. That day in the Capsula Teta Vigatini, Mato Payena Choganello Sojan the Mago Vare, Mago Palatin, Koala Chambari Lam, Norsum and Davoka, Marite, Sosoke, Mato Palatin, Devo Sojan the Menjongata. Tetham Dawajina Yatandina Mena Samne Tetham Sawatam Jere Mato Jigge Tatele Los Chuba Jigge Tene Hajang Getini Pachi Shuk Chembo Dajig Chim Madova Dabu Koala Tanghoga de Mato Tele Los Chuba Majeba Dawatang Loto said the Gavs of Langone Tane Gatati Jaja Jatam Balam Norsum and Dawat ロバットパセリ、サンジェギチュード、センゲンジソンヨナ。テネコランゲコユテレディカド、センゲンダウスコソンダウ。ジャジャジャタンバロバットバイエンベチェナ。タテタバマトロトテトソンゲナネジャン
Just as in the uh, the second stanza of the song, the first stanza of the prayer contained within the song, Chechen Baba Dorje is addressed by the various parts of his uh, original uh, personal name. In the next stanza, uh, he is ref described or extolled using uh, as a description of his attributes the various parts of his uh, two names as a Tertun or treasure revealer. It is also in this uh, third stanza that um, the supplication turns to its object. In the first line, it says, grant your blessing so that renunciation may arise in my depths. Renunciation here means the desire to be free from samsara, the desire for a certain emergence. In fact, the word literally means certain emergence because it is calling a thing uh, uh, by the name of its result. And this is a uh, key to understanding why we need it. Because if we ask ourselves the question, why are we still wandering in samsara? Why have we not escaped or emerged from samsara? The short answer is simply that we have never desired freedom from samsara. We have never understood correctly how uh, the suffering is ubiquitous in samsara. We've therefore never resolved that we must become free from it. So the starting point of gaining freedom from samsara is to desire that freedom, which in turn depends upon a correct recognition or correct understanding of what is wrong with samsara. So, Grant your blessing so that renunciation may arise in my depths is a prayer asking that through the blessing of one's guru, one develop a sincere, a deep desire for freedom from samsara based upon a correct understanding of what samsara is. Now, From the depths means wholehearted, deeply, um, we say deeply entrenched or deeply founded uh, in one's mind. So therefore, in this um, stanza, there are two related uh, concepts. One is ignorant thought, which is what we want to be free of, and then your mind or your continuum according with dharma. The uh, middle of this stanza addresses Terchen Baba Dorje by his names as a treasure revealer. Um, the two main names uh, given to him by deities uh, and uh, uh, by uh, in, mentioned in the treasures are if great splendor, blood drinking, joyous wisdom, great bliss, blazing Vajra, which is the uh, Barwe Dorje. 
And the other one that is also found in his uh, treasures is powerful Mara Taming uh, Revealer of Treasure, or Togden Dudu Lingpa. So here both names are used. Prophesied by the great splendor blood-drinking deities, celestial lord, joyous wisdom, your body is the union of great bliss and the best aspect. With a blazing Vajra, you crush the head of ignorant thought. I pray to the powerful Mara-taming revealer of treasure, bless me so that my continuum accords with Dharma. Prophesied by the great splendor blood-drinking deities refers to the many prophecies of uh, Techen Bhava Dorje's uh, parents, uh, made by many deities as well as uh, gurus. Celestial Lord means that he uh, is the, uh, has achieved the celestial estate, uh, the state of, uh, of, the, the, of what's called Kachara, uh, and therefore he is the, the Lord or the, uh, in a, the owner of the celestial realm. Joyous Wisdom is uh, part of his name and is used here because Joyous Wisdom is the wisdom which brings uh, the celestial state. Your body is the union of great bliss and the best aspect. The best aspect here refers to what is uh, the uh, ultimate emptiness, which is called emptiness endowed with the best aspect. And so it's saying that his body is the union of bliss and emptiness. With a blazing Vajra, you crush the head of ignorant thought. And this, of course, uses the, 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 the most commonly used part of his name, blazing Vajra, or uh, Bharva Dorje. Obviously, the crushing of the head here is um, a metaphor to li liberate us. Here means access apprehension. There are, uh, two, there are three types of ignorance. There is um, the mere lack of knowledge. There is doubt. And then there is active misapprehension or incorrect uh, thinking. Mere lack of knowledge to act And, and, and a deeply held belief in something that's not true. And so what you are praying for in this line is that the guru engulf you with his splendor or bless you so that through his wisdom and blessing, your uh, ignorant ideas, your incorrect ideas about things um, be uh, pulverized. Now, what are ignorant ideas? Well, for example, do good and avoid evil. An ignorant, uh, incorrect idea would be, would be to say and go around saying, the Buddha taught we should do evil and abstain from good. That's, that's an example of just getting it totally wrong. So what you're asking to be um, crushed here is total, total what prevents our mind from and also correct no more so so chunyi in so ta no yon ma pa shemi ドヨンマパンシェミランドキャラ。あ、こんな、いしんがいでべしょ。センデニャランドバシンギラブ。だ、ドドトニョエンダプトンダウチロシキンドウンデ。で、ユナンガランギシェンメ、ルーソワイ
The next stanza expands upon the meaning of what is meant by the, uh, the line, bless me so that my continuum, my being, accords with dharma. And it explains specifically what your being or your continuum according with dharma uh, consists of. First, it says, bless me so that kleshas and bewildered thoughts are purified in dharma's expanse. What uh, keeps our minds uh, from according with dharma is our uh, two things, our kleshas and our uh, delusions, bewildered thought or deluded thought. And these means our deluded ideas, which consist of, for example, believing in a self when there is no such thing as a self, believing in other when there is no such thing as other, believing that uh, appearances exist independent 
from, uh, be, from merely appearing. Believing in the existence of an internal apprehending subject and external apprehended objects. These are all uh, deluded thoughts. So when the mind's nature is recognized, it recognizes itself, and all of these deluded thoughts and kleshas are purified in Dhammata's expanse because um, the deluded thoughts or deluded ideas are uh, disproven and the nature of the kleshas is seen. So therefore, they're all purified. Now, there are several problems with the translation here. The first problem we come to is pleasures not abandoned are brought to the path. Um, that's fine, except I left out the two most important words in the line, which are without craving. Um, the idea that the in this prayer is that the the person who do what King Indrabhuti did, Ramshe said, which is traverse the path to awakening without having to give up a, a particular lifestyle. In the case of Indrabhuti, it was being a king of the kingdom of Udyana. So pleasures not abandoned are brought to the path without craving or without craving are brought to the path. Pleasures here refer to objects of the senses, things that we see. And we abandon them or reject them because we crave them. And as long as we suffer from craving them, then they cause us problems and therefore we try to reject them. But if you have no craving for them, there is no reason to uh, abandon or reject any object of the senses. And then finally, and the supreme in this, this stanza is, bless me so that kleshas and uh, deluded thoughts are purified in Dhammata's expanse, so that pleasures not abandoned without craving are brought to the path, and so that the supreme fruition of the five wisdoms and bodies is accomplished in this life. In other words, here um, you are praying for the achievement of a perfect awakening. Now what follows after that is the next stanza is the third part of the song. It is not a part of the prayer. It is actual instruction on uh, how to uh, Meditate, how to rest the mind. Begins with, without al alteration or fabrication, gently rest your mind itself in fresh awareness of whatever arises. Without alteration means without attempting to change what the mind is. Without fabrication means without attempting to eat any self in fresh, or present, as opposed to pa awareness of the past. So fresh or present awareness of whatever arises. And again, it says, without craving, fixation, or activity. Craving and fixation means without attempting to achieve some particular uh, state of mind. Relinquish doubt, the thought, is this it or not? Don't desire knowledge or insight. And then the last line, Arimshe says that the, the, the word um, uh, give up in the Tibetan, or the Tibetan equivalent of what I translated give up, is probably a, a misspelling that should be the word uh, naked. And so that would change the meaning from without thought, give up whatever happens, to without thought, sustain nakedly whatever happens, which makes more sense. 
since it's in line with the rest of the, the, the stanza. And then the song concludes, these are the instructions of Troktung Dechen Barwe Durje for Lama Karma Gompo. I pray for your spontaneous accomplishment of dual benefit. That means the good uh, uh, of yourself and the good of others. Jump, 
All right, so uh, moving on to the next song, which has um, six lines and two errors of translation. <laughs> um, although the first one, we it took a while to figure out. I was just something missing. So the this song it was clearly written at the request of a tutor. And we can infer that from the fact that it begins tutor. And uh, so, and the person was, to whom Barbara Dorje was writing was evidently a, a tutor or teacher of Dharma with some uh, knowledge of uh, Dharmic concepts. And the request was clearly a request for instruction on how to cultivate the nature of the mind. So it begins, tutor, to cultivate your mind's nature, do not be content with your narrow understanding of emptiness. The word that, um, I think narrow is the best translation, um, I just somehow left it out. We looked at it and Rimshe initially thought it meant demonic, but it looks like it's, it's narrow, which makes more sense. In any case, the meaning is clear. The person to whom he's, he's t writing here is somebody who has uh, presumably a good conceptual understanding of emptiness. And the first thing that he needs to, to learn from this instruction is that the emptiness that is an object of thought is not true emptiness. It's at best an approximation. And it's actually because it, emptiness is, is absolute truth, which is not an object of the intellect. So any concept we have about emptiness um, is always wrong. It's always wrong. So the first point is, if you want to cultivate your mind's nature, do not be content with your narrow understanding of emptiness. Even if it's a correct understanding, it's wrong. So what, if you don't do that, what do you do? Diligently cultivate as much as you can, so practice as much as you can, unaltered, even rest in the fresh nature of whatever arises. Unaltered means, Rimshe said, that you do not follow thoughts, nor do you attempt to uh, chase them out or stamp them out. So you don't, when you follow a thought, that is alteration, because your mind is altered by the act of following thought. 
when you attempt to uh, banish thought or stamp them out, that is alteration. It's an attempt at alteration. So instead, simply remain in the present. When you follow a thought, you're actually thinking about the past because you're following a thought that is no longer present. So the way to avoid this is to simply evenly rest in the fresh, which means the present nature of whatever arises. So the thought, whatever thought arises, as long as you remain present in the present, you are not following it you're not altering it, and you're not stamping it out. But notice that this has nothing whatsoever to do with any concepts about emptiness. The two things are completely different. And then it concludes, I have no instructions beyond that to give, written by Barwa Dorje at the request of Trajam, not Trajal. I misread a, a, an M as an L. So it's cha jam. And so the corrections on that page, <laughs> well, it's good. There's lots of room to make corrections because there's so little on the page. Or I would add the word narrow. N narrow, sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I can't go back and forth like that. The word narrow uh, <laughs> before understanding and change cha jal to cha jam. <laughs> Notion, notion, you have not loved it. Simply, it really is the best sympathy. The image is a mjipa, menom, masam, rangar, ya. Yes, up, yes, up, yes, up, lens up, tenic, lamadi. Yes, up, and I kiss up, my dear. Lancer mining on the John She Shepa Consort Namjal Sonam Jante Songi Jet and Baba Doji Pell, Sondo Tate Chunkin Tene, Consort Namjal Sonam Jante Chunkin de Rendo Shuya Tene Tando Pen a Sangu Nero Surgeon to John Kitab the Hua Rendo in the capsula, semi request simple thing. That same te more jay on the capsula, semi request simple thing into that, get it tambu gay, that sal tam gisheba tela, request simple thing on that, read over. You meant to them, is it wrong? Wrong ship, okay. Wrong ship, okay. Image the Majibas or Ramshi body. Thing send their lag on a tiny thing. The dingling goes on the way. Ripe <laughs> Then the Rangara, they told a yap. Jesup, Tanik Jim, and they Jesup and Sadi, the length of Tanya Samuel. Jetop, Jetop, Lentop La Lentop Jetop, Jetop, Tanik Jim, and they Rasa, mining on the John, Tati, Nana, mining on the John Yasri, and that's on those. Tata Raja, you know, last. The next song on page 102 was uh, written at the request of Punsok Namjal and Sunam Jeltsin. And it's evident uh, by what's in the song, which is uh, five lines, that what they asked was, what do you do when 
your mind recognizes its own nature. So what do you do then when, when mind itself is caught by awareness? And they may also have asked about what do you do in post-meditation? Because the first three lines deal with, are an answer to the first question, and the second two lines, uh, the last two lines are, are an answer to the second. So first, um, in answer to the presumed question, what do we do when uh, our minds experience their own nature? Jechen Baba Dorje gives a list of four things, three not to do and one to do. When mind itself is caught by awareness, don't introduce the speculation, is this it or not? When you have a, an experience of your mind recognizing its own nature, because we want that, because we, we seek that, then there is a tendency to uh, start, is this it? Am I really seeing it, or is it not it? And um, obviously, that is whatever whatever the uh, recognition was or wasn't. Thinking about it is not it. So the first thing is, don't start thinking, is this it or not? Then he continues, don't wonder. So don't wonder. Don't speculate. Don't. Don't wonder, I wonder if this is, can I, it, am I going to be able to do this forever? I, you know, don't wonder. Don't think. Don't think about it. Rest freely. Freely means let your, your mind rest in that state of recognition without imposing any, anything other than the, the, the presence of mere awareness. Don't impose any. Uh, restrictions on your mind. So the first three lines, when mind itself is caught by awareness, don't introduce the speculation, is this it or not? Don't wonder, don't think, rest freely. And then about post-meditation, he writes, in post-meditation, cultivate naked awareness, bare direct awareness. Naked means non-conceptual, where there's nothing in between the awareness and the object, because the object of the awareness is the awareness itself. So in post-meditation, cultivate naked awareness, self-illuminating, because it recognizes itself, and undistracted. Inashagimi. So we'll stop here with new material, and if you'd like to ask any questions, please go ahead. Yeah, we just do. Come. Here we have a whole hour. So first, happy Halloween, and thank you for the teaching. <laughs> um, Rinpoche, do you yourself write songs or prayers similar to the ones we are studying in Treasure of Eloquence? If so, would it be possible for you to compose a prayer that we could do that would help to heal the damage that all of us are now causing to the earth, to our air and water? I ask because my sense is that we're heading towards unprecedented ecological disaster and many people are going to suffer because of this. Thank you for considering this request. Sadang, <coughs> 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 
Techen Barba Doge's um, writings are uh, extraordinary. And I'm not quite sure whether the things I write are extraordinary or um, ridiculous. They're somewhere in between the two. So I th think that we should all pray um, sincerely for the environment. And I think I should not write anything about it. But if, if it, and I'm, I'm, which means that I'm drawing a blank right now, but if at some point it occurs to me that I might write something that would be beneficial, I will do it. I'm sure she says thank you. You're welcome. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Rinpoche. Um, I, I'm sure this is, uh, I'm asking for a reminder of something you've taught many, many, many times. Um, but, um, and just tagging on to the question there. In our practice at home, and some of us are doing some wrathful practices, um, and especially in the current climate, of you know, with the um, global warming and the presidential election, I'm sure a lot of us are sitting down to practice with a lot of sadness and a lot of fear and a lot of anger. And certainly being aware of it and trying not to alter that when I sit and practice. And I'm trying to sit with an awareness of any of these negativities that I'm feeling um, and proceed with the practice and try to let the practice marinate some wisdom into me um, and trying to see all as the mandala and see all as sacred. Is there anything else that you might suggest for us in these really, really difficult days? Uh, I didn't quite understand what the connection, I understand the question in general, right. but I didn't understand why you stipulated wrathful iconography. Um, do you mean, uh, do you mean how do we not turn it into the, the, the desire to invoke the power of wrathful deities to, to, to s s smash corrupt people or something? How to do it skillfully, because I'm certainly going there at times. Okay. Without so, compassion. All right. I mean, so, without compassion. Yeah, that's right. that. That's the whole thing. Okay. It's, you, so, you, you can fill in the blanks what I'm uh, thinking. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Baba Dhamma Kasa Dene Nangwa Tanche Doji Shunu Nampa Yin Doji Shunu Chukorong Yin Ke Sam Gokudos Nijin Shotna Yapo Mares De Yinang De Samsan De Nijin Tets Shogi Wares Make sure to Deng Song Kapsa De Ngatso Ke Koyo Koyo La Nyinka Tsapo Yapa Tang Data De De Ari Make sure Ari Get that the Hapta Jamala in the vote look back a quala mo the chipoto tra marcel de San Notona de Nemonke gonna get called Takta Zoyak, get the part tits longitus. 
I was a little clearer of okay. in in reading it between the lines of your question in the t- but I, I, we, we're not going to use names. No, we're not. <laughs> no need to. Papa ポコカッチャヒソムネオマネペメホンケンドンシンケンテンデキチャパトパブヨンデヨセンネタチェネセケワンガナソナレセンガナオテソマナジンケンオネタネタマルセヨレスペナフナダジャンヘヨレスケン
presence uh, in the, the hearts of the Tibetan people. Practically the first words out of the mouth of any Tibetan baby uh, are usually Omane Peme Hom. They can speak at all. Uh, they know that mantra. And so it's very pervasive within Tibetan society. Um, this doesn't mean that um, Tibetans uh, are necessarily all uh, free from uh, kleshas or from wrongdoing. And Rimshe said, for example, um, Tibetans, some Tibetans will hunt to eat. And, uh, but as they aim their, their guns at the deer or whatever it is they're shooting, they still say, Omane pay me home. And then he said, that's just a joke. I mean, it may be true, but it's just, so. Like, the, the, yeah, I mean, they say it as they, as they shoot the, the animal. That has nothing to do, so oh, okay, scratch that, that's just a joke. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So, um, the real answer is, <laughs> The, the basis of your question, what you're really asking about is the fact that we have clashes. You know, we have these negative emotions. And the clashes can that touch your side. Because we have clashes, they can affect our motivation in practice. And the most important thing is to make sure that in spite of our clashes, that our motivation never be corrupted by our clashes. It doesn't matter whether the deity on whom you're meditating is peaceful or wrathful in appearance, because all of these wisdom deities are perfectly tranquil in reality. They abide in a state of complete absence of clashes. So the adoption of a wrathful demeanor by them is simply to appeal to those of us who feel more inspired, more faith uh, in deities with that demeanor. It has nothing to do with clashes. So it's important not to uh, mistake the appearance of a wrathful deity to be some kind of endorsement of uh, our clashes. It's not. Well, but you can, so when you find yourself um, infecting your practice with your clashes, then instead of um, dualistically demonizing those that you're afraid of, because um, it really comes from fear, pray for them. Not, you know, at, n don't think of them as enemies. Think of them as beings you want to help. Now, it's fine to pray that their clashes be cured. You know, and you can pray to any wisdom deity for that peaceful or wrathful, that their clashes uh, be. But you're praying for them. You're not, you're not ruthlessly discarding them from the, the, the field of beings who must be protected. I think it's being afraid of my own anger. And, and I, I feel righteous Mm -hmm. about it because I'm, I mean, I can bring up anything to be angry about that they're not evacuating refugees from Aleppo, mm -hmm. for example, or any mm -hmm. number of things, or people in combat gear are, are arresting women who are trying to protect water rights out in North Dakota. I mean, any mm -hmm. of those things. And so I'm concerned about that righteousness in me and that dual thinking in me. and. Perhaps does Rinpoche recommend that I just sit in shamatha and examine the anger before I uh, continue with the puja? 
Samsung the control home ke nam to pen ding song ke sajo no the control lonya ke shima mombo to pen da te te seria ne ne me mombo la dopo de tap dopo ju se me shin do shi ga pa da de na jin de de ne de da ta de north dakota ne de da ta konsol ke Protest is all to a concert, la mat me tom a la so, but don't control, control get numb to the so shadow, car, kanga sare, the nyamland, the sha, shine, tets gonna pengere kanga de. Sha, and kora, nyamland yane, shine gon pengin no na, yapri, to ten a degree. Then I am shed down sanji jum nen deke. Then Semjin leg nawala, Kun Gao Yang Majilis and Songari. The Shetange Kun Gao Tilayante is a Semjin do have number sass over my boy Yung, who did this nothing she wanted. Then I am that legit Latin in Wiyari, Majuzu. Sangari on it and then booking Yam no don't look at them be ordered. มันเช็คได้บ่เด้เลกิละตินิงวยอะไรที่อินดิกาสละตาซาเดตินิโควาตุงะกิลายิเซนิซุงบาเดทามาลาตุงะเชกอนะปาจิโดจุเมวันด
but actively making aspirations. May they be protected from this suffering if they're killed. May they have a good rebirth and so on. That's fruitful. That's different from brooding. So the Buddha said to Ananda, basically, Ananda, stop brooding. Okay. If anyone I've heard you talk about the story of the son who brought the dog's tooth to his mom a few times. Mm -hmm. um, and it worked out really well for his mom. What happened to the son who lied to his mother? How did, how did that affect his karma? Ah. Life um, he probably did not accumulate uh, any negative karma, probably a lot of, of uh, really good karma. Because the result of, he, first of all, his motivation was to save his mother's life, to prevent her from killing uh, herself. And uh, motivation is w largely what determines the results of an action. Secondly, uh, the actual result of what he did was that his mother achieved Buddhahood through her faith. And she would not have achieved Buddhahood uh, had he told her the truth, that it was a dog's fang. So there are times when uh, lying is a good thing. <laughs> there are times when lying is the right thing to do. Um, there are times when killing is the right thing to do. For example, in a previous life, when the Buddha was a, uh, a ship's captain, who's in the story is always given the name, the courageous captain, so who knows what his name was, but anyway, um, he, this ship's captain became aware, he was carrying um, a shipload of 500 merchants to an island somewhere, and uh, became aware that one passenger on the ship, um, who is called the bad guy with a spear in the story, he's just always called the bad guy with a spear, was uh, dead set on sinking the ship, killing everyone aboard. Forgot what his reason was. And, and oh, well, so, so that he would get all the jewels. That was his reason that the that the merchants were bringing back from the islands of, of of jewels. So the captain thought about it, and he realized that the only way he could uh, save the life of his uh, passengers was by killing the bad guy with the spear. And he, he knew that killing was wrong. And he knew that when you kill people, you tend to get reborn in hell. So he was willing to go to hell for killing this guy in order to save the lives of the other passengers, the other 499. And um, so he killed him. 
And several things happened as a result. One result is that instead of going to hell, uh, that bodhisattva, who later became the Buddha, the, the courageous captain, um, in that life accumulated merit that it would otherwise have taken selfish hell for his crime was um, by saving the lives of those 499 merchants and uh, forming a connection with uh, the bad guy with the spear that he killed, uh, he caused them to become uh, 500 arhats upon his awakening. And those were the uh, 500 arhats who performed the first um, uh, collection uh, of the teachings. And the one, the f the, they only had 499. And the one who uh, had to go off and achieve our hardship and then come back was Ananda, the Buddha's cousin, who was the rebirth of the bad guy with the spear. So because the Buddha in that previous life killed the bad guy with a spear, he got to be reborn uh, as uh, Ananda. And uh, because and he was delayed in achieving our hardship because of the remaining obscuration from his previous wish to, to do that. So um, it was evidently the right thing. Sometimes what looks like the wrong thing is the right thing. Hmm? There are lots of such stories. Like, for example, the mother of a Sangha and Vasubandhu was a nun who had a dream in which the Buddha appeared to her and told herself, uh, told her, you need to go out and get pregnant twice, which normally nuns aren't supposed to do. But she saved the Buddha's teachings. One of her sons saved the, the teachings of the Mahayana, a Sangha, and the other one, the teachings of the Abhidhamma. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'll do one and then we can look to somebody else if you have other questions. So I don't. Um, dear Rinpoche, is mere awareness the same as the experience of the clear light when one practices the yogas of Naropa? Hmm. Janik Soma de Dang de Narochuduk Nanga Yopa ke Usel. Um, well, Rinpoche f first said, he said, I don't know, I've never done the three-year retreat, so ask those guys over there. And then, so that the, the committee came up with the answer. Um, there's a slight difference because the context of the practice of the clear light in the six dharmas is a practice of the path of means, whereas the maintenance of uh, mere uh, mindful awareness is characteristic of the path of liberation, like Mahamudra or the Great Perfection. So there's a bit of a difference. Okay, so does somebody else want to ask a question about the next one? I think you've got it. Okay. All right, so now cultivating naked awareness. Would you please speak more about the idea of cultivated naked awareness? 
please, how do we best cultivate the state? So. The Rigpa Jemba Chonglok Khandra Gokuto. How the what Jemba Chono and then I'll stop with you, but last one. Teach you get a bitch in on. Um, the uh, how to uh, cultivate naked awareness is clearly explained uh, in the songs. So, um, and then he he said, "I could have the translator read them again if you want, but that's how to do it." Okay, moving on. So now the next one is at the bottom of page a hundred. It says, "Without thought, sustain nakedly whatever happy." whatever happens. Does this mean that you can't rest in the nature of mind if there are thoughts that come and go? Hmm. Dear Ella, the Chi Jung took me Jamba, dear Ang Jung, so because of took me, so na Nam to Nam to Masha by Kapsu, so na Dona Nam to Sha Merung, well, the Kesa Yena, Tanya. Very much, get Jung, so oh, Lassa. Get Jung, said Nam to Kari Jung, Lassa. Then it took me, Kang Sung. Oh, that thing, Nam Tho Kare Chona Yang. Then it Nam Tho Tela Tome Siddhi, Yapore and Dota Dupore Song, because Nam Tho Mahyoba Chene. Nam Tho Kare Chona Yena Yang. Then you see something. Nana, then it Chong Sung. Lasso. When it says, without thought, sustain, uh, N nakedly sustain whatever happens. Um, the fact that it says whatever happens indicates that the presence or absence of thoughts uh, is not at issue here. Because um, if there are no thoughts, nothing is happening in the mind. So no matter what happens or whatever happens indicates that uh, it's fine if thoughts arise. So when it says without thought, it means don't think about the thoughts that arise. In other words, don't think this is a good thought, I should, I should uh, prolong this, or this is a bad thought, I should get rid of it, and so on. Just look directly at the nature of whatever arises. So in other words, thoughts are fine, but don't think about thoughts. Okay. Yeah. And, the Tibetan text, which has the word give in it, Rimshe says that's a misspelling. It should be a different word that means naked. And so that means direct, non conceptual uh, experience. So, all right. So I'm going to skip the next question that came in and go to the one after that because it kind of is about the same okay. verse. So, when the translator was talking about Rinpoche's explanation of the continu continuum verse, I think it was blessing my... Oh, sorry. When the translator was talking about Rinpoche's explanation of the continuum verse, I think it was the blessing by continuum, my computer was buffering. Could you repeat the explanation or maybe even add to it? I think it is hard to dis distinguish between continuum and the atma that Buddhists reject. The what? Oh. Yeah, Rinpoche didn't really talk much about the meaning of continuum. So we can ask him, uh, what is the difference between the Buddhist use of continuum and the self uh, proposed in, in other systems? Mm -hmm. 
Ju so so gansak so so wa ki ju te dang te chero pa ke ke lam pa ke da te la che pa kare yo. Rangu se te tan de la pa ke rangu ke dan se ma sen ki ju yo na rangu sem ju te son. La sem ju re. Le sem ju. Te ne sem ju dang da ke che pa kare le. Da te kondo ke yo pa ke le kondo yo wa. La so. Da si che le ki ke wo te ta yon ke. ピクテタチマルケ。あ、そう。だ、トペケランジタンデネランジュセデカスラ。センタンベケランジ。マトペランジ。あ、そう。テネセムジュテ。パラニョンモンバケタ。コラマリクパラテンニョンモンバケデビ
When you pray to a creator, the basis for that prayer is the belief that the creator exists, the creator created you, the creator is omnipotent, and you are powerless. When you pray to a creator, you are asking an omnipotent being to um, do uh, whatever it is you're asking for. But you have no um, power on your own. Your Ramshe said like a yo-yo. And the um, creator just has to be um, pleased by your prayer, but can do everything to you. And it's always going to be that way. In, the, in, the, in creator belief systems, the creator is fundamentally different than you. And never ever um, reach that state. You will always be asking. You will always be begging for scraps, as it were. The Buddhist approach is very, very different. Uh, in fact, it's exactly the opposite. We pray to our guru not because our guru is fundamentally different from us, but because our guru is fundamentally exactly the same as us, with one slight but very significant difference. The foundation of prayer in Buddhism is the understanding that the nature of your mind is perfect. It is the Dharmakaya, but it is temporarily veiled. What your mind really is, is concealed from you, which means concealed from itself. So the purpose of Buddhist practice, and therefore Buddhist prayer, is to remove those temporary veils that uh, conceal uh, the mind's nature. The role of prayer, therefore, in, Buddh in Buddhism is to ask of those, the guru and the three jewels, who have already removed the veils you want to remove in yourself. And the reason that they have a blessing to give you is because they have removed the veils that you want to remove. It is not because they are fundamentally different. If they were fundamentally different, they couldn't really do anything uh, for you. So that is the difference. The purpose of Buddhist prayer is to receive blessings so that what you already are can be revealed as it is. And once you, <laughs> once you realize the Dharmakaya, once you uh, reveal what your mind really is, you have no need of any god other than yourself. The Dharmakaya is the ultimate god, and that's you. That was so powerful. I, I thought I had a question, but maybe I... Um, yeah. Um, you mentioned in, um, a truth, uh, which is that we, um, we don't really want to give up samsara in order to reach realization or dharmakaya. Is that... Did I understand that correctly? We don't. This also. The that I'm not so the 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 should have been on the Nijung Shamachi thing, the Nijung Shamachi, Chevy Jelan, Shubagi, done that I'm not so good. Korwala, Tapa, Negapagi, Nijung Machi, Korwala, Nepa, Majoaki, Chunji, this also. Well, the problem is that we 
we don't desire freedom from samsara because we don't admit or know um, how bad samsara is. We haven't given up on it. We're still trying to make it work. Okay, the, what I was thinking is that, you know, sometimes um, this, this non-freedom, we know, we have a desire for that freedom, but um, it's kind of seems to me, like you say, it's obscured, or we, we have all these veils. And so to, uh, to, um, to reach that freedom, to get to that freedom, is, seems a little fearful because we still have glaciers. <laughs> So it seems to kind of go round and round and round, and um, yeah. So just by, is there an example? Is there an example like maybe, maybe Amitabha or one of the practices? You know, when we're when something is more familiar. I mean, I cannot say I'm familiar with the freedom of not. You know, I, I certainly don't think samsara is wonderful. I don't, I, I certainly want, would love not to have so much suffering. On the other hand, I don't know if I know anything else. Mm -hmm. So I know that the practices are part of helping us to lift some of that uh, veil so that we can see maybe. But on the other hand, uh, and we have our, our gurus and our Rinpoche's for examples um, but is there like any other example one might Rinpoche might give so that it doesn't feel so unfamiliar? Hako to the Maris. Hamagote de de la tets chagi dose. Korwa mato ngatso ke nyanyong shenda meshen and ngatso ke nyang de ke gopong loan on the shungamaris. Ta do dogris. That nyang nyang in le depa ke pe daoshi dona ngatso ke jitra malonga ke pe niche ho daoshi yarifes. Bene Natsu ke lama namba don chebu damba de so nyangle de ba ke pere you know Natsu ke ke ngose ke tuk de ngose de sem la shagmare ta ten da wa ni chuna de ke do la so ta tan je ne ngana so she de ya te de tani ダメ
rank pento mehiana kande yung da botana tik sachi one tane geta kusum to ke chenam semje jana pento de rand manda ba yimba tende kon to ke tik tik sach pange de tene tik de nima tang tumna da bodi tumna te ta pena khobe ke ne so da bodi le cha jana Nima de Shadam Gendola, Timnat Ranging Sandoki. Tell an inching, minching in the Sargo, Tendi Timnat the Dukta, and Massive Timnat ending a Massan and Dickam Dukta and Duke the Gomari. Tim Mogot the Dupe Gapsula, Genda Ginello Shinaha Kogan Menayam, then the Sanjay Chuk in the Lama Yam Chujung. ダスタワスムダゴンジョスムダタワスムダワラサワタムネテニコラテパタデンベゴンツイケンドラサワタムネテニソスゲニョマンベデパカレヨバイナヤンテタムチセンネデベジンドラネロゴンドチョワシュサ
uh, with yourself. And, the, and then that will give you a sense of wanting to be like them, not fearing to be like them as some kind of loss. And then the analogy is of the sun and darkness. When the sun rises into the sky in the morning, it does not need to get rid of the darkness. The darkness is not some kind of solid thing or commodity that needs to be drained out of the sky or swept away from the earth or buried under the ground. The darkness, in that sense, isn't a thing. It's an absence. And when the light of the sun fills the sky, fills the world, that itself is the ending for that day of the darkness. So we think that our state of darkness is a thing, a possession, something that we have, and it's all we've ever known. So we fear the illumination of awakening as it's some kind of loss. But just as the rising and shining of the sun in the sky is not a loss of darkness, it's not as though the, 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 the world has lost its, its capacity for, for shadow. In the same way, we have nothing to lose. What happens is when you pray to the three jewels and three roots, when you pray to your guru, then your mind becomes brighter, clearer, more luminous. And as you get brighter, the darkness naturally uh, diminishes but it's not diminishing in the sense of a thing being drained out of you. It's not a thing. It's just like the darkness of night. The inner shadows. On that happy note, maybe we'll stop for this afternoon. <laughs> Dona Very good question. <laughs> Sorry, you are not finished. <laughs>